So I get a lot of questions asking how I get my resin print so smooth and clean, sort of like this Archangel right here from 3D Wicked. So I'm gonna go make a short video for you today showing you a simple process on hollowing out a model. Now this is how I do it, and I'm gonna help you prevent splits and trapped resin. And actually this process will actually help you save a little bit of money in resin as well. So what's going on everyone? Welcome back to the channel. Let's go ahead and let's get this video started. Okay everybody, so the version of Chichibox that I am using is the version 1.9.3. And the printer that I am using is the Anycubic Photon Mono X. This is the print settings that I'm currently using on this printer. These are my personal settings, the advanced settings, and on this too I actually factor in my resin volume that I'm going to be using for this model. So my typical resin cost me is $30. It could be more, it could be less for some people. And so once I am fine with my settings, I'm going to adjust my model on the build plate. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of lift this up from a flat surface. I don't want to print a flat surface because you can have all kinds of adhesion issues where you're actually going to possibly have a print fail. Um, plus you're going to have all kind of warpage. It's going to warp the bottom of this here anyway and you're gonna to have to do a tremendous amount of sanding. So once I get the model to where I am satisfied with it on the build plate, I'm going to go select all. Then I'm gonna go up here to where I hollow out the model. And my wall thickness that I usually use most of the time is either 1.5 millimeter or 1.8. Yes, I know this is fairly thin compared to what some people use, but it works, and I'm going to show you why. The number one reason is because of the infill structure that I use. I use a grid 3D at a, just 5% infill density. Now, what this does is it actually puts a support basically inside the model to prevent warpage, to prevent any kind of resin pockets, or anything of the sort that way you're able to print with this successfully so once I am satisfied with the wall thickness that I'm using I'm actually going to go ahead and start the hollowing process and as you can see as it goes down you'll see these structures inside the model that is the support system the infill grid 3d that I'm using Again, it's not your typical support, but what it does, it does support the model. This right here, at 5% density, this is all it gives you, which is just enough. But as you can see, I don't think I'm going to have any issues with any resin pockets or anything of the sort in either one of these models. It's pretty straightforward. So once I am done hollowing that model, I will go through and I will actually dig the hole for the drainage holes. I typically use a five millimeter with a depth of five millimeters. Now, what one thing I do wanna do is I want to add as many drain holes as I possibly can. And in this actual bust right here, I'm gonna enter in four because I can't put anything at the top. And on the top of this one, I'm gonna go for three, should be enough. And then on the bottom, I'll just enter in two. You can make them however big you want, whatever shape you want, but I use the circle and I typically use small drain holes. That's really all you need. Anything else is just massive overkill. So one thing to keep in mind is you want to usually add a drain hole here, but I'm not going to on this one because keep in mind, this model is going to print like this. So yes, I'm probably gonna have a little resin issues that's gonna gather up into here, but when I flip this build plate back over, all the resin will come out of the bottom. So keep that in mind, otherwise you'll have a mess on your hands. This one is not gonna have any issues whatsoever. So when I do put it in the alcohol to clean it, it's gonna have more than enough holes to actually drain all of your alcohol out. So once I'm satisfied with my drain holes, I'm going to go add supports. 
I use auto supports. I never use pre-supported files. I have all kinds of issues in the past with them, so I just don't fool with them. If you're a Lychee user, Lychee hates pre-supported files. Um, so if you are printing pre-supported files with Lychee and you're having great success with it, then God bless you. So my support settings are typically stock. The only thing different really is the density percentage. Now, of course, the higher the number, the more supports that you're going to have. 20% um, is usually more than enough. That way I don't have a lot of divots in my models and I don't have to do a lot of sanding. Too many supports pulling it from the build plate when it's coming from the FEP can really put warpage and put a lot of unlevel surfaces and stuff on the bottom of your model. So I don't want it to do that. So once I'm satisfied with everything, um, I am going to hit all. And what this is going to do, of course, this is going to add supports to the model. Okay. So one thing that I've noticed with a lot of people's models is on the inside here, you will see a lot of times when they hollow it out, these type of supports. So let's go back to this. In mine, you will not see any inner supports other than that 3D grid infill. And the reason being is because I already have something in there and the auto support program notices that. So one thing I don't want to do is have a lot of supports on the inside of this thing because you will have all kinds of resin to get trapped inside there. And later on down the line, once you have your pretty painted model up on your shelf, over time, it's possible that you can see cracks and splits and you'll have leaching resin come from it. And that's not good. So another thing that I do is I look at all the supports on the bottom. Um, anything more than, like I said, 20% can be overkill, but it's up to you. There's no right or wrong, but I am satisfied. Everything is going to be supported. I can probably actually take away some of these supports, but I'm going to leave it the way it is. And then I'm going to go back and just simply slice the model. Okay, so once the model is sliced, you got your time. Of course, this is usually never, ever going to be right compared to what the printer's actually going to print. Keep that in mind. I've never seen them actually be on time with each other. So it, it could be more, it could be less. Usually it's more. So here is your volume milliliters of resin that you're going to be using for it and the total weight. As you can see, it's not very much because you have thinned this out to 1.5 millimeter. Now, when you go and you thicken this up to two, three, four millimeters, however much that you put it to, of course, your volume is going to go up. This right here is going to save you money. You're going to get more out of your resin than what you typically would if you print it at a higher thickness. I use these settings with every model. There's no exception. Um, usually with my bigger models, quarter scale and above, I'll go 1.8 millimeter. Smaller ones such as busts, I'll go 1.5. One six scale, I usually do 1.5. Most of my bases, I'll do 1.8 millimeter only because I want stability. Once you're done with everything, you're satisfied, hit save. Then you're ready to put that model on your printer and let it rip. All right, guys, so I hope this really helped you out, especially you new people getting into 3D resin printing. And I can't fail to mention that I do have a Patreon. We would appreciate your support. The link is below in the description. And if you don't want to do the Patreon, hey, consider the new super thanks that we have below as well. But more importantly, you can support the channel by just simply watching the videos. And hey, don't forget, we have that 10K giveaway coming up. And while you're down there, don't forget to leave some comments. Hey, and I'm open to suggestions on whatever you'd like to see a video made of. And don't forget my affiliate links below. I do get a little kickback from Amazon, and these are provided for you at no extra charge. Okay, so until the next video, everybody, stay safe out there. Get out there, create something. Print, prep, paint, repeat. And we will see ya.